because I got eliminated from F Boy Island. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 353 of oh the Spearhead Sundays podcast, the podcast that has never missed a single episode. I am back in Melbourne. See you later, you you subhuman Brits. All right, you disgusting Scots. And you filthy Irish, I'm back in my home country. Um, and look, dude, bit of a new haircut going on here, all right? I wouldn't say it's a mullet. I would say that it's, it's a spoiler. I was in London. I went to a barber and uh, I went, hey, I would like one haircut, please, sir. And uh, he was like, uh, he was Turkish. All the barbers there are Turkish. And he's like, you are Australian. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, I know what haircut you want. And I went, what? He went, you want a mullet. I love cutting mullets. And he was so excited about cutting mullets that I was like, well, that's what I'm getting. That wasn't what I went in for. But he was like, I love Australians coming into my barber because then I get to do my favorite haircut. And you know what? I got a bit of a spoiler going. What do you reckon? I like it. I really like it. See, I would never describe you as a yes man, Keelan, except for when it comes to every style choice <laughs> I've ever made. I don't think I've ever in my life gone, what do you think of this? And not heard you go, I really love it. And and it, that that used to make me feel good. It used to make me feel confident about my fashion choices. But I swear I've never once heard you say, I, I don't think that suits you. So either I'm the most immaculate... <laughs> dresser on the planet which i'm open to that yeah. that could be true mm. i'm certainly the best dressed comedian in australia um but i i i just feel like i could put on anything you'd be like dude you that's the best outfit you've ever worn i'm certainly fashion blind <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is see that's not what you want to hear is like i go oh do you think this looks good on me keelan goes dude that's the best that you look so good. And then I remember when we lived in Tasmania, he was like, dude, I don't know how to dress myself. Can, <laughs> can we please go shopping and you just tell me what to buy and I'll get it. Oh, we still need to do that. We do still need to do that. But ne but neither of us have the budget anymore. Yeah. Cause that was a good time period where Keelan wasn't paying rent. And I was, I was making so much money that I could pay two rents and buy a house. But now tough times have befallen the Spears and Brown community. That's all right. But that's all right because we're on the way up. If it helps. In retrospect, I can look back at fashion de decisions and say they look bad. But I for me, for you, yeah. Okay, what's some bad fashion decisions I've made? Um, Are you? There's no way you could come up with fifty. <laughs> well, uh, I well, I can't tell you any bad ones. If you showed me one, I could tell you. Okay, uh, but well, that'd be hard because I just I wouldn't be able to show you a single bad fit <laughs> of mine. I really liked when you had the fringe. That I loved that stuff. When I had that, I didn't mind that, but it was it was uh, it was one of those haircuts where you had to do it every two or three weeks, or it would start to just look rough. Yeah, that was probably my favorite cut. Really? Yeah. That one. That one was. I think it was so different. It was very different. That one was a controversial cut. But this haircut just looks the same. Just the sides are. A but bit with a little spoiler. Yeah. Going on at the back. But also, it just looks the same. No, this is ve no. This is a this is a wild stylistic change for Lewis Spears. Is that a bunch of grey hairs. Yeah, I'm going very grey. <laughs> I'm I've I've gone so grey over the last th few few years, and there is a small part of me that's hoping it's because of of my sleep being so terrible and and how stressed that made me. I'm hoping now that my sleep is good and my stress levels are way down because I'm actually sleeping. I'm. There's a small part of me that has a huge amount of false hope that I'm going to revert and stop going grey. But one thing, one thing I am happy about is I'm not, I'm, I'm not balding at all. 30 years old, my hairline is in the same place that it was when I was 15, man. Now, unfortunately, I have a huge widow's peak, so it does look like I have been going bald since I was 15, but I promise you it's an illusion. It's not, it hasn't moved. You know what? It's like I it's like I made a wish on a cursed monkey paw of like I want to never go bald, and then the 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 finger curled and and like I'm not going bald, but I am going grey really early, and the natural hairline that I have just looks like someone in the in the early stages of male pattern baldness. But that's a negative way of looking at it. Other people would look at it and go, dude, that guy's going super saiyan like Vegeta. 
because he's because his hair's going white and he's got the the V going on. Look, I'm back. All right, I'm here, and we've got brand new merch. Loosespears.com. The Spears Pizza Parlor is open for business, baby. The first ever merch drop for Spearhead Sundays. It's the first time we've ever collaborated with an actual merchandise designer to create a T-shirt, and it's the best uh, T-shirt quality we've ever printed on. And it's the first time we've ever done an enamel pin, and we're going to be doing more pins in the future. So if you want to collect pins, this is the first one you can get. If you're a big, if you want to be a big pinhead, all right, you got to get on it. Um, do you know what? I've been waiting to tell you this. Yeah. I've been wearing the sample shirt of the Spears Pizza Parlor T-shirt, which I love. It's great, nice cream color, cool design, front and back. When I was in London, I went to this uh, pizza joint that was really popular, takeaway pizza place, and I was wearing the T-shirt. And I go in and I order pizza. And then I'm standing at the front waiting for my order with like 10 other people. This uh, new couple come up to order. They come up straight to me. They go, hey, man, do you work here? And I went, no. And they went, really? And they looked at my shirt. <laughs> and they're like, but aren't you, isn't that uniform? I went, oh, no, no, that's, this is just, this is my T-shirt. They're like, oh, okay. Dude, I stood there for, for 20 minutes. 15 people came up to me. Hey, man, do you work here? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I don't work here. I just, I'm just a big fan of pizza. And then after 20 people came up to me, hey, man, do you work here? When it was time for me to collect my order, I went up and the, the guy that ran the place clocked my shirt and then got really suspicious, was like, hey, dude, do you, uh, you work at a pizza shop? And I was like, no. And he went, really? I went, oh, I'm just like a big fan of pizza. <laughs> and he went, you don't work at a store, though. I went, no, 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 I'm Australian. And he went, so you don't live at, you don't live, no, no, I'm traveling. This is merchandise for my thing. I think he thought I was a spy from a rival pizza place that was picking up one of their pizzas to try and steal the recipe. Some Krabby Patty formula pizza joint going on there <laughs> trying to keep their fucking secret pizza recipe a secret. That's funny. So this is the best merchandise that we've ever released, especially if you would like to be mistaken for a pizza shop employee. We really fucking nailed the design. I think so, yes. Um, unfortunately... A lot of people have been using Keelan's discount code, which is code Keelan, uh, which I have not advertised at all. I haven't mentioned that. Uh, apparently, it's also on my tickets or some of the tickets as well. People have been using that too Yeah. Um, without being prompted. I don't know who enabled... I didn't enable that discount code, so I don't even know how you can use it. But it seems like a lot of people are using code Keelan to get a, a hefty chunk of change off. It's one of the biggest <laughs> discounts we've ever run on the store. Yeah. If you use code Keelan when checking out in your order, um, and and a, a small portion of uh, the money that that is discounted actually goes directly to Keelan. Yeah. So I Passive mean, that's income, the most maybe. amount of money. Every, like the amount of money you get off the shirt, Keelan is going to get, and that's the most amount of money you've made from this podcast in like a year. Yeah. So let me because Keelan out. is is a volunteer. He's not. Well, I wouldn't call him an employee. He's here as a good friend. <laughs> yes, that's a good way to sum it up. Yes, I'll uh, I'll go into Shopify and I'll have a look how many people have used it. Now, whenever whenever people go, oh, uh, you know, Keelan, the guy who works for you, I'm like, oh, he doesn't work for me. He's just a good friend. <laughs> this podcast, yeah, I say a podcast I do is a passion project. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah, just 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 two fellas hanging out while the mics are recording. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, let's see, code Keelan. Oh, i got to find it. One How many people have used this code, Keelan? How much money is going into your bank account? Because the, because I'm reminding you again, the, the amount of money that you save on the shirt, all right, not only does that get taken off your order, an exact equal amount of money goes directly into Keelan's pocket. So, cool. It'll be great for me to make, I don't know, a couple of dollars. <laughs> but Keelan's the real winner in this scenario because if you use his code, he also gets a huge cash injection. How many people have used the code? 120. 120 people have used it? <laughs> yeah. We haven't gotten that many shirt orders, have we? You're telling me that every single person who bought a shirt used your code? Over time, over time. I don't, oh, it doesn't okay. say when it was That's going to include some tickets. December 7, 2020. Okay. I don't know. And then February 2nd, 2021, it was edited. And mm -hmm. then August 3rd, 2021, it was edited again. And right. then 23rd of October, 2022, it was once again edited. 
Right. Okay. So Great. S- someone in the back end has been fucking with my code. Yeah. Yeah. Or with yeah. My Probably code. just lowering the discount because the the amount of savings that people are getting by using Code Kill and is it's just. Funny, it's, I mean, it's sending me out of business. Well, it's how I'm paying for my trip to Europe. Absolutely. And uh, how much do you get off by using the code? One cent. <laughs> <laughs> One USD. Wow. One cent USD. So what's uh, well, USD? <laughs> I can't afford that. The exchange rate's ridiculous. That's like 1.45 cents. That's almost a dollar fifty. I'm stoked. if you times it by a hundred, which it is. So what? 120 people. That's 120 US cents. This is gonna bankrupt me. Coquillen. I feel like that guy's screaming in a warehouse. Loosebeans.com. Shirts must go. So I'm back from the UK. What if the next time we put something on sale, it's a dollar off? Well, I'm not fucking crazy. <laughs> I'm not a maniac. Maybe maybe that's something we could do um, if, like, like the whoever I hire, they could have their own code. So, like, when you and me are doing the podcast as friends... When I hire someone, yeah, they get their own code. I don't get it. What I'm saying is it's a joke about not hiring you, oh, hiring someone else yeah, and right. giving them a code. <laughs> Keep up. Um, right. Use code Keelan for one cent off. God, the Minecraft movie looks shit. God, I don't think I've seen a, a, a more soulless movie trailer in my life. I mean, out of... Like, that's going to be the biggest property that has emerged in the last 10 years. How old is that game? I remember remember playing it. It's got to be older than 10 years. I remember playing the fucking beta beta, like, when it first, first came out, when you had to download the launcher and pre-purchase an account. I was one of the first ever autistic people to play that game. 2009, I think. Yeah, I was there 2000, 2000. I feel like it was 2008 or 9. I was there in the trenches, dude. Me and my friends, we were on Ventrilo playing that shit, all right? Discord didn't even exist. We didn't even know what Discord was. We were on Ventrilo and TeamSpeak, digging holes in the ground. They weren't even mobs, brother. There, I was there before survival mode. I was there when you could fly, and that's the only thing you could do. Yeah. I was there at the beginning, right? When, when the... When the Bible was written, I was there. And to see how far Minecraft has come has been great. But to see this movie trailer is, God, it looks terrible. What the fuck is Jason Momoa wearing? Why is does he look like he's wearing a pink tutu? What have they done with his hair? Are you telling me? Dude, I am so sick of video game and cartoon franchises being like, oh, we've been transported into the world of the video game. How are we going to get home? Brother, you're just making shit Jumanji. All right. We have Jumanji. Great novel idea. And every single video game adaptation has just been, what if we put humans in the... Make it about the game! Why didn't they just do it like the fucking Lego movie? Right? That would have been so much better. Make everyone square. You're telling me Tenacious D died for this? Fucking Jack Black be like, what's your name? I'm Steve. Dude, I can from just from watching that trailer, I already know that it's at that at multiple points in that film, someone goes, uh, he's right behind me, isn't he? Um, did that just happen? <laughs> uh, you're telling me I can make a pickaxe from sticks? A pickaxe from sticks? This is the best day ever! I know that there's there's several of those fucking lines in there, and it's not good. Also, love a diverse cast, but none of those people look like they would be friends, all right? Why is there a giant fucking Islander dude, a big fat black woman, and then another person and then a child, all right? Sus group. Why is there only one kid with these these people that none of them are his parents? Weird. 
All right? Haven't there been enough questionable interactions with children when it comes to Minecraft stars? <laughs> We're trying to avoid that. See, what they should have done is they should have, they should have created a movie that reflects the average player's experience, which is you log on to a world, you build a masterpiece, and then that friend that no one likes that much but no one dislikes enough to exclude him from the group blows it up and thinks that it's funny when really it's just kind of ruined your week because you were very proud of the house that you made. <laughs> Why the fuck would you do that, bro? I understand that might be funny for you, but I actually spent a lot of time on this. This server's been going for three months. You just joined and you're blowing shit up because you can't create anything. Fuck you. And then you tell him off and then he behaves himself. But then one day he rocks up and he's, he goes, hey, guys, have a look at my new skin. And it's just Hitler. And it's like, oh, you're very funny, bro. <laughs> very good. You're Hitler. Cool, man. I can't stream this. The worst thing, though, is... Dude, look at Jack Black's T-shirt. I hate Jack Black. What? Yeah. You don't like him? I've always... Even as a kid, I fucking didn't like him. That's that's controversial. Because Jack know. Black was the man... Jack Black was killing it so much from when we were kids to now that he almost got away with stabbing his mate in the back and doing a terrible Minecraft movie. It, it reminds me of Chris, what Chris Pratt is now. He used to just be in every movie. And as a kid, I was just like, this guy isn't funny. Being fat isn't a joke. What? True. Uh, but that's the not only, really you know, his character, though. But in a lot of it, it is. Young Hal, is Shallow Hal, that's a good one. Shallow Hal's great. School of Rock. Sucks. What? Kung Fu Panda. School of Rock's awesome. Kung Fu Panda, I don't care about. But also I realized that I probably would have loved it if I was young when it came out, but I'm too old to enjoy Kung Fu Panda. Jumanji's the only one I'll give him credit for. That's, you have, this is, see, this is why when you go, hey man, love your outfit, I'm like, I don't know if I can trust this man. <laughs> but Mario, terrible. Weird Al Yankovic, he's not. Nah, Mario was, Mario was a great movie. And, and, and I realized that I just started yelling about how much I hate Whenever people are like, oh my God, we're stuck in the real, in the video game. Well, how do we get back to the real? I understand that that's exactly what the Mario film is, but hey, it was, it was quite good. I'm trying to find another one. He's on. I don't get Tenacious What's wrong D. with Chris Pratt? I also don't like him. I feel very neutral on Chris Pratt. What, what do you mean he's been in everything? Shark Tale, worst movie I've ever seen. Wrong! <laughs> Shark Tale rips. The car wash. The, the fish that I would like to fuck if she were real. One of the only good Will Smith movies. You can't tell me Shark Tale sucks. Yeah, Ice Age is good, but he's not even really a character in that movie. Is he in Ice Age? Zeke. Who's Zeke? Who the fuck is Zeke? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. There's... Probably some character that shows up for 20 minutes going, oh, Yeah! That does annoy me about Jack Black is that that's his character in every single thing he plays. It's, it's like, how does his auditions go? Jack Black rocks up and they're like, all right, how would you play this person? Hey, yeah! Okay, I'll give him. That's even that's even all he does in his fucking band that doesn't exist anymore. I'll give him The Holiday, Shallow Hell. What's The Holiday? Some love movie. Yeah. And that's kind of it. Shallow Hell is good. That is, that's a good movie. That's, that's a, a that's a great movie. Oh, yuck, fat chicks. <laughs> oh, and King Kong. Ugh, yuck, fat chicks are fucking gross. There's no way that a fat girl could have could be a good person because they because uh, I wouldn't want to fuck them. And then and then and then he's like, oh, actually, fat chicks are humans too, and that's the moral of that story. God, what a what a beautiful lesson to put out there in the world. Actually. Fat women who smell like cheese are people too. And that's it. Everything else he's in sucks. Dude, I would like... And there are so few... This is this is another controversial opinion. There are so few comedy music groups that are funny. Tenacious Dude, D nah, is not wrong. funny. Tenacious D, I would argue, aren't even really supposed to be funny. I would say they're supposed to be fun. 
They're like a they're like a silly band. I don't think they I don't think they're out there trying to make really make you laugh. I think they're having fun with it. They're being silly. I don't like it. That's what I would say. Like the best the best song in the world. That's like that's pro- quite funny, but it's but ultimately I would say it's more silly than funny. There's heaps of fucking co- Lonely Island, oh, Leno yeah. and Woodley, um Fuck, the Chaser had a bunch of hilarious comedy songs. I guess I wouldn't call them a comedy song group. Um, there's a bunch. Wrong. <laughs> Me? I've done a bunch of really good ones. Straight out of Frankston. That's a good, that's a great one. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy Lad Can't Call Grabbers <laughs> from a gang called Essays with Habits. Something, I am the Bong Lord. Fill it o fish. Fill it o fish. Yeah. You know, you know the tune. Anyway. I was just in, speaking of bad teeth, I was just in <laughs> London um, and uh, I wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who came out to the UK tour. I haven't done a big post about it uh, yet, but I will. Um, but I, I wanted to talk about it here first. Man, what a what a experience. Thank you so much. I cannot believe uh, how well it went, how nice everyone was afterwards, how much everyone enjoyed the shows so many amazing moments at every single show. Uh, it was just fucking incredible. Every single show was amazing. I didn't know how any of them would go. Originally, we were only going to do London and Manchester because we knew those were big cities. But then London sold out so quick that we added another show and then that one sold out. So I was like, fuck, let's just do a tour. And we just kept kept adding shows. And uh, I think the only one that was, like, small was Bristol, which was, like, 34 people. But fuck, dude, that's heaps for a small town in a country that I've never been to. How the fuck am I selling more tickets in Bristol than Launceston? Huh? I live in this fucking country. I can't get more than 17 people at Launceston. Fuck you. No, that's all right. I love Launceston. I'll definitely be back next year. Look, this was supposed to be a thank you to everyone who came out to the United Kingdom tour and Ireland. And uh, I loved it. It was so cool. Being in your beautiful countries was amazing. I've never seen so much history in my life. I will definitely be back next year. I think they'll be even bigger, even better. I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to come back in the fucking heat again. That sucked. I thought all these English people were just sooks complaining about the oh, It's 28 degrees. My grandmother's going to die. No, for real, she will. <laughs> it's so humid. And your houses are ovens, obviously, because it's supposed to be cold there. But when it gets when it gets over 21, you just start cooking in the fucking house. I was in London. Like, I got off the plane and it was 33 degrees outside. It was hotter in fucking London than it was in Australia. And but it's humid. It's such it's gross. It's like sitting in a sauna. Um so I'm gonna go back when it's cold next year. Probably like halfway through September, October, maybe. Uh colder anyway. But yeah, I just I just loved it, and thank you so much to everyone who came out. It was like a, a really, really, really special thing, and it was such a big risk for us to take, uh, and it it paid off, man. We we filled out a bunch of the shows, sold out a few. Just a crazy experience to uh, have like different accents um, there, and dude, I got noticed a few times as well in in public. That's sick mm-hmm. in London. Got stopped a few times by Australians. Doesn't count. <laughs> but at at I I was walking around Dublin, Ireland, and this guy was like, "Excuse me, buddy, I'm not confusing you for someone else, am I?" <laughs> That's the worst accent ever. And I went, "Huh?" And he went, "You're that comedian fella, Lewis." I'm like, "Yes." He goes, "Fuck, what are you doing here?" I'm like, "I did a show last night. Where were you?" <laughs> and then I and then I uh, I actually killed him. Um, no, he's alive, barely. Um, <laughs> That was cool. Um, but yeah, I loved it. I think my favorite city was Liverpool because it was very fun. And my least favorite city. See, this is the Birmingham. stuff you get. Birmingham. I don't know why you hate Birmingham. I was I was quite there was nothing to hate about Birmingham. I quite actually I quite liked Birmingham. That was where they, they shot a lot of um Peaky Blinders. It was a nice place. There was a lot of good cafes. There was like a uh I went to a market that had a lot of vintage fashion. Mm. That was it was a cool place. Uh, Manchester, what a letdown! Everyone told me Manchester was going to be fucking amazing. It was the most boring place I've ever been to. 
fucking dead. There was nothing going on anywhere. All the bars were closed at like 10, 30 uh, in the day. There was, it was a ghost town. I think Manchester is like a student town. I, I was there when all the kids weren't there. I was staying in student accommodation, giant, like 11 story new building. That was a fucking ghost town. There was like six Chinese students wandering around yeah, this building that, sh- that I feel like feel like should have been full of thousands of students. Well, but, you were going there. School's not wasn't back. No, school wasn't wasn't back. So that's what that's a big thing that I learned about touring that country is you actually like all of the comedy club owners were like, "Man, you're selling really well for August." And I was like, "Oh, what what have I done? Why should I not be doing shows in August?" And they're like, oh, all of the school kids are just back at their parents' house. So in that country, everyone lives in student accommodation when uni's on. Yeah. And then when uni's off, they go back to their parents' place to save money. So, no, yeah, none of the young people were in a lot of the cities that I was at. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. So next time, September, October is when I'll tour, when all the kids are in the calm. And that'll probably make this, the cities more interesting as well. And also people don't go out when it's hot because fuck it is tough. Some of the show, what dude, one show, I think it was Leeds. I did a bookshop, <laughs> which I thought could have been a disaster, but it was great. Right. It was like 45 people sold out fucking packed. It was one of the cities where we were like, Oh fuck. I don't know. Leeds is kind of a smaller place. I don't know how many fans I have there. Let's just book a little one. Sold it out. Probably could have done two, but the bookshop, it was like a bookshop. Like imagine a bookshop. It was that. And then they put chairs in it. So all the walls were just books and outside it was night and dude, we fogged up the windows. It was like a sauna by the end of the show. So lesson learned, I'll come when it's cold and then people won't be having heat stroke in the middle of my show. I was cooking, dude. I've never performed in singlets that often and it was in fucking England. Um, but yeah, I loved it, dude. Couldn't get over how short English uh, Scottish people are. And also English people in general, quite sm- a lot, a lot smaller. But something I noticed: a uh, lot of lot of tall women, or at least a lot of women that are like taller than their partners. I noticed that that everyone kind of maxed out at the same height. So like tall women were the same height as the tallest men. I don't know if I was imagining it, but. There weren't, like, there were no men like me. Like, the biggest the biggest outliers were women. So there were lots of very tall women, but there were no very tall dudes. So there were so many chicks that were, like, taller than their boyfriend or exactly the same height as their boyfriend. I don't know. Interesting thing that I noticed. Is that, in, is that worth saying on the podcast? Many people are debating this. It's a, it's a topic of contentious discussion. <laughs> Now, Keelan's actually going to the UK in two weeks mm, yep, um, because uh, Keelan actually heard I was going to the UK and he went, oh, good, I, I don't want to be there when he is, so I'm <laughs> going to book it two weeks after. If you've ordered any merch and you live in the Greater London area, I'll hand deliver it to you. Yeah, Keelan's actually um, going over there just to deliver T-shirts. So yes. uh, that is that is literally true. If you live anywhere near where Keelan is travelling, he will hand deliver the, the <laughs> merchandise. I did. I, there's one guy who bo- who ordered before it went like recently, yeah. And we were looking at it, but he lives kind of like two hours out of London, and I feel like that's a really funny joke, yeah. But the reality of that is is like, even funnier because it, it would be horrible for you. It's like two trains, uh, yeah. three trains, a bus, an Uber, and like a twenty minute walk. That would be that would be so good. Like I'll do that if the guy wants to drive me back to London. But okay, I'm, I'm not. I'll find out the guy's name and I'll say it on here. <laughs> no, don't, how about you ask him if he can drive you back when you deliver it? Like, just be like, hey, man, because you'll be like, oh, dude, Keelan. Luke. Oh, man, I love I love the podcast. That's why I bought the shirt. And you're like, dude, here's your shirt. Thank you so much for your support. By the way, can I have a lift? And then he'll be like, yeah, sure, no worries. <laughs> you get in the car. You st- he goes, where are you going? And you're like, oh, just, just uh, straight ahead, mate. And then you see how long you can go, you can give him directions until he realizes that it's not like around the corner. <laughs> and then he goes, hang on a minute, where are we going? And you're like, oh, London. He goes, I can't fucking drive you to London, man. That's two hours away. You're like, well, come on, dude, we're halfway there. <laughs> Mate, it's been 10 minutes. I'm not driving you to London. Luke Warner. Well, what if the guy works? 
Like, what if I yeah. rock up at 2 p.m. and he's not there? Like, that is such a waste. That would be very funny. I'm not... <clears throat> so, it. yeah, it's... For, I'm staying in Whitechapel mm-hmm. for the first day with Phoebe's uh, sister. It's, Jeez, that's where I stayed in London. That's an experience. Staying in Whitechapel made me realise why Whitechapel is the cheapest square on the Monopoly board. <laughs> it's a bus, uh-huh. a train, yeah. a bus, uh-huh. a bus, yeah. a walk, uh-huh. a 25-minute 20, 20, walk. Mate, live stream it. That's great. Guys, if we sell 100 extra T-shirts from now, Keelan will uh, hand deliver that T-shirt and document his experience on the Spearheads on his podcast page. If we sell 200, he won't be allowed to take public transport. <laughs> he has to walk. I would Okay, I would actually, I'd hitchhike and walk, I'll do it. If we sell 300 total shirts, I will do it. <laughs> you heard it here first. And to make this goal even easier, we've organized a very special discount code for a huge amount of money off. And all of this money will go directly into Keelan's pocket to help fund the transport. There was someone, I got a a message from, I think on the Patreon and they, Mm -hmm. they asked, they were like, Oh, I really want to get this shirt out to uh, Germany. I'm going to Germany and got a few places in Germany. So I can't remember. I'm trying to, Oh, it was Dennis. Dennis, uh, he goes, tried to use, uh, want to buy the shirt, whatever. Um, I live in Germany. So maybe Dennis, if you do order a, a shirt, I'll bring it to you, depending on where you live in Germany. Any, I guarantee anyone in Europe who buys a shirt, Keelan will hand deliver it to well, you. I don't guarantee it. I, okay. Well, I, well, he, Keelan will think about it. If anyone lives in Whitechapel, I'll, I'll walk it over to you. <laughs> maybe we could meet at the bus stop. Yeah. Okay. How about this? Huge meetup at, in Whitechapel. <laughs> all right. Everyone who buys a T-shirt, just head to Whitechapel. If you see Keelan, he won't have any of the shirts because we don't, we haven't. Oh, true. Okay, this is, this is fucking impossible. We're not even printing them. <laughs> We're not even printing the shirts for until after September 30. So you, you won't have any. You can give him your sample shirt oh my that God. we got made up. That's a good one. All right. So when you go over <laughs> to London in two weeks, Keela will, will hand deliver the shirt off his back. Is there a way to see on Shopify the people who've ordered it from international? Probably. But but probably not the most entertaining content to do figure that out right now. Well, yeah. yeah. Well. So anyway. <laughs> the Hawk Tour girl starting a podcast. Hawk Tour, spit on that thing. And you know what she's called it? Hawk. Talk to her. Oh. Uh-huh. That's actually quite funny. Now look. I think the podcast is gonna be a huge success. I think she's funny. I think she's very likable. I think she's quite pretty. I think she's a su- a good southern girl. That's like I don't know any like southern girl podcast influencer chicks. I reckon she's going to kill it. Everyone's telling her, "Oh, this fucking hot tour girl needs to go away." I reckon she's going to absolutely fucking crush it. I think she's going to be huge. I think she's going to actually sustain it. I reckon she's going to be one of those people that are like, oh, that's that girl. Oh, that's like, I reckon five years from now, people are going to be like, oh, yeah, she did do that hawk to a meme. I remember that, but she's going to be huge. I reckon it'll work. I really believe that. But it, but it is interesting that like, man, it's, it's so funny how that's the most viral I've seen anyone go in the last few years. I, I thought know. that was almost over where like you do one thing and then it creates your career mm. because with TikTok, everyone's going globally viral every 30 minutes, but that one just really took and really hit and she's managed to hold on to it and take that momentum and push it into a project. She's got millions of followers on like every single social media platform. Mm. I thought, I mean, I said this on a podcast, a few podcast episodes ago, I thought she fumbled it. I thought she fucked it up because she didn't capitalize on it fast enough. Mm. But it appears that I'm wrong. Looks like they were just setting everything up. I want to know who Pookie is. <laughs> I don't think they're together anymore. I think she's upgraded. <laughs> she's too busy now. Um, you know, I saw that because obviously everyone with that, the Hawk Tour thing, everyone was like selling merch. Oh, yeah. Just anyone who, who figured out how to print on demand was selling merch and pe- I, people were buying them. I... Uh, saw that she's engaged lawyers to recoup 
that money. Oh my god! Okay. Because uh, I I I believe because she said it, she owns the term. Like it's her intellectual property, kinda. Or it might even be owned somewhat by her and the guy that did the interview. Oh, have you seen that's how really salty interesting. That guy is. Yeah, because no one gives a fuck about him. <laughs> But like, why? Like, who the fuck would care about about him? He asked her a dumb qu- a, a question, and she was the interesting one in that yeah. scenario. Spit on that thing. What's he saying about this? He's just upset that he hasn't become famous from it. He doesn't say anything. He's not even on screen, is but it's he? His show. I think that's why he's upset. It's his fucking arm holding a microphone. That's like, if you're not the funny one. I mean, that's why these people do these street interviews that suck. There's a way to do street interviews where the guy holding the microphone is the funny one. I've done heaps of that. But if your only talent was, what do you do for a job? And then the other person is a star. The other person is the star, dude. You're like, anyone could do your job. Like you're doing the fucking same job that that loser on E does on the red carpet. Hey, what, what are you wearing today? How much does your outfit cost? It's like you are literally replaceable. Mm. The entire reason why that clip blew up is because she was funny in it and and you were silent. Like great job at facilitating her to be funny. That's the interviewer's role when you're doing these types of things, but you can't get upset. Oh, I'm the I'm the guy that interviewed the hook to a girl. All right. Cool, brother. What like what what am I supposed to do with that? Spit on that thing. Although, if I, if I were her, right, once I made a significant amount of money, I'd probably send him some. But but she doesn't have to do that at all. But those interviews are always set up to, like, catch you out and make you say something stupid. I don't think he deserves anything. Maybe I'm just – maybe that – I just – I feel like that's something that I would do. Like, because what, what he's done accidentally – Right, it's not like he planned it, but what, but but what he's done is he's ensured that she'll never work again. Mm. What a gift to just take a chick who probably didn't even want to be an entertainer and be like million dollars a year for the rest of your twenties. I would I would give him a couple grand after I after I like you know, like if I if my lawyer scooped in like hundreds of thousands of dollars in merchandise fees from bootleg merch that other people sold. Yeah. I'd be like, here's a couple grand, bro. Maybe. Because he Maybe. did have the vision to cut it, edit it like that. He did He did make the clip get put out. There's something. But also, fucking who cares, yeah. too, about you, mate. Yeah. Fuck him. But it, it'll be interesting. I reckon, I think she's going to be... I mean, she already is huge, but I reckon she will transcend Hawk to her if she keeps it up. Interesting, though, that I was thinking about it. Who else has done something like that where it's like out of nowhere they become famous because of something they said that now everyone else says? The only other person I could think of was the D's Nuts guy. (laughs) He's not famous. He's on the street begging for money and people film him and laugh at him. Where's the Deegs Nuts Guy podcast? Now, some people might say that he's mentally disabled and that would have something to do with his ability to create. Is he mentally disabled? Yeah. Yeah, that might have something to do with it. But I feel like, you know, that guy, that guy, let's be real, has had a tenfold bigger impact on culture and he's homeless, it appears. Wasn't Deegs Nuts from a rap song in the 90s? First, was it these nuts, <laughs> dude? I got my mum a good one the other day. Did you see this? Did I send this to you? No. Oh, you would. You're gonna lose it. Okay. So this is as um, this is a fucking great one. Yeah, it was In a Dr. Dre song. Really? <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Okay, how's this? This is a great. You know what? This is the best one as well. F- family group chat. All right, mum. Dad, my brother, me, okay? And I go, this is a great one. I'm back in Melbourne on the 2nd of September. Actually, sorry, it's the 3rd. Mum says, yay. Dad says, great. My brother says, woohoo. And then I go, I'm flying home via Sarkanon. And mum said, huh, where? 
And I said, sucking on these nuts. Yeah, you put that in our group chat as well. It got ignored. <laughs> I threw that one out in a few group chats. <laughs> oh no, I'm flying on I'm flying by sucking on. Who's who's sucking on? Where's sucking on? <laughs> and I said, sucking on these nuts. That's awesome. She said, are you 12? <laughs> Group chat goes wild. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Cop that, mum. I love that. That Don't is worry. a good one. Sarkanon is an underrated one because I've I've never seen that. It's very obvious because Sarkanon, it sounds like, it, that does sound like a business or a country. Yeah, I, to be honest, I looked it up, but then I couldn't find it. I was thinking, oh, he must have made a mistake. <laughs> yeah. See, there's a little tip for you guys. This is why you listen to the podcast. Sarkanon, underused. <laughs> Because D's, everyone knows D's. Yeah. There's a bunch of them that are just immediately obvious. But Sarkanon, it sounds like an airline. It sounds like that. Sarkanon could be a drink. It could be a country. It could be an insurance claim. (laughs) That's a good one. Like, oh, man, I fucking, I crashed my car. And now I have to submit a form through Sarkanon. Can you believe this? And they go, what's Sarkanon? Sarkanon these nuts. Very good. Send that, put put that in your family group chat, and uh, get back to us with the results. We'll love we'll love hearing them. Um. So yeah, I think the Hawk Tour girl is going to be big. I think that now I have been loving the influx of viral videos of people catching predators, and then. Instead of doing a Chris Hansen have a seat right over there, they just beat the f- dog shit out of them in a Walmart. I love it. It's great viewing. It makes me laugh every time. There's this one. <laughs> There's this one. They've, and they've gotten so good at it, right? Where it used to be just like some fucking psycho that would just film it, like one hand filming it and the other hand punching. Now they show up in groups and they coordinate. There's this one great one where it looks like a Walmart or a Target or something. This guy runs up to a dude, like 50-year-old looking guy. He goes, are you here to meet a 12-year-old? The guy starts running down the aisle. He runs around the corner. There's a dude waiting there with a shopping trolley, rams it into his knees. It would have hurt so much. And then the guy starts sprinting in the other direction. There's another guy waiting for him at the other aisle. Fucking slams into him, pushes him into a into a shelf. It's like the fucking Truman Show for pedophiles. <laughs> like fuck, there's no customers in this grocery store. They're all just here to beat the shit out of me. So funny. That one was making me laugh. However, now that it's become like a really big trend, lots and lots and lots of groups are trying to 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 catch pedophiles. And <laughs> what I'm seeing a lot of that I'm not happy with is very, very mentally disabled people showing up to molest kids and people are still beating the shit out of them. I don't like that, all right? Some people are wrong and the comments are like, uh, I don't think this guy was capable of catching a kid. I feel like you guys have caught him, but I feel like even though his behavior is unacceptable, I don't think that he is any danger to anyone. I th- in fact, you would almost say that mentally there's nothing wrong with that relationship at all. They're the same age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't... Look, if you're a pedophile hunter, love it, all right? But if you get to the Walmart and the guy's retarded, you can't punch him in the face. You've got to let him go. Call the, call the, don't even call the cops. Call his mum. You know, he'll t- they'll take away his, his his Game Boy. He'll cry, and that's enough. That's that's a that's almost corporal punishment for him. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's almost too much. I don't think you can be showing up to the to the sting and beating the shit out of a mentally disabled person. I don't know about that. It's definitely look. It's it was something that that I used to see, and I'd be like, yeah, that's what you get for being a child molester. Now it's something that's like, oh, I'm just watching a guy that really likes hurting people. (laughs) And he's finally found an outlet. Like, oh, great, I don't get in trouble for this. You know, like the people that are filming these videos are the people that if they they existed in the 90s, they'd be the people that are filming bum fights. (laughs) You know, that was a big thing on VHS tape. They'd pay crackhead homeless people to fight each other. 
And that was a huge popular thing. But then people were like, ah, maybe we shouldn't prey on this vulnerable community. Maybe this is wrong. But now those same customers and people that would be paying for and filming homeless people beating the shit out of each other in a, in a parking garage are now watching pedophiles get the dog shit beat out of them in a fucking supermarket. <laughs> you know what my, my, like the, the one that always makes me, like it, it's like, why are we letting this person make this type of content? Vitali, that prankster guy, the, Ru the, oh, the yeah. Russian guy, yep. he's the biggest pedo hunter. He's doing it so big that he's paying rappers to do it with him. So, like, he's got 6 9 with him. He had the, I think he had the game with him. He had a, another big rapper. I can't remember the name. I think he had those, oh, fuck, those, um, that guy from Ray Shremard, maybe? A bunch of big rappers. But, like, whenever I see him doing it, I'm like, dude, I remember the fucking video of you beating the shit out of a woman on a beach. There's like, he almost killed a woman, beat the fuck out of her, seemingly high on drugs or something. It's like, I don't want to watch this, like, you know, he should be on the receiving end of some of these fucking videos. <laughs> it's weird as to be like, oh, you're here to meet up with a woman. It's like, you're here to meet up with a minor. It's like, yeah, but you, I don't like this guy, but you almost killed a bitch with your bare hands. I don't like you either. Anyway, I just think it's uh, it's it's definitely degenerate content that probably shouldn't exist. But also, I've kind of landed on because uh, people are like, "Oh, this isn't helping anyone." I think it's it is at least making every pedophile in the world think, "Fuck, is this like when they when they get their their what they think might be a hookup?" It's at least making them go, "Fuck, am I?" Have I found a victim or am I about to be very famous? Maybe I shouldn't leave. Maybe I'm I'm scared. I reckon that's good. Having that, like these videos go so viral, it's got to make every predator, every time they think they've got a hook, think, oh, a Walmart? The kid wants to meet at a Walmart? I think I'm going to stay home. And then that's one safe kid or a ruined video for Vitaly, the woman basher. <laughs> Keelan doesn't like him. I just think that they're, they're, um, it's hurting their cause. They're definitely not not good people. Like I think that they're 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 people that just want to beat the fuck out of someone on camera. Yeah, they're not being heroes. I don't think so. No, I think I think um, I think their anger is misdirected. I think they're possibly maybe they're um. Their goal is misdirected. What they what they're thinking they're doing is good. Yeah, like hurting a pedophile is a great thing. Yeah, but then destroying kind of you get bashed for, for potentially being a pedophile. That guy's never going to get charged. Just no, re yeah, reported. he doesn't get charged. Yeah, yeah he just gets I think. bashed. Yeah, which is not is the worst outcome. It is. It is very funny. Them like they beat the shit out of a guy, and the guy's like, "I'll call the police," and the guy's like, "All right, call him." <laughs> and then the pedophile's like, "Oh, all right." Just keep punching. <laughs> I guess it probably does prevent it from from the guy trying again. Yeah, my my I like you're right, and I think that maybe it prevents because it instills you know what it is? It's like Batman. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. That's like every time every time a predator sees one of these videos going viral on Twitter. It's like the bat signal appearing <laughs> yeah. in the night sky. It's like when the bat signal's out, I'm not going to rob a bank. Like chances are, right, if I see a bank vault and it's just open and there's cash there, like sure, I could just walk in and and probably Batman won't show up. I mean, there's only one Batman and it's a big city, but the fucking bat signal's out. It's not worth the risk. I don't want to get my nose broken. <laughs> That's what those videos are like. They're the fucking bat signal. Out, out, and, you know, he's, pro he's probably fighting the Joker. He doesn't have time for me. I'm just a petty criminal stealing pearls from a woman. <laughs> but when those fucking, when the bat signal's out, shit. You don't want to be out there predating. Um, but yeah, one, one day one of these pedophile hunters are going to get killed. Yeah. For sure. 
I don't, like that's the thing. I would never ever film or initiate violence in America because you just don't know who has a gun. Even in gun-free states and cities and shit, I would never ever get into a fight if I could avoid it. I would never instigate it. Self-defense is like another thing, but like, fuck man, everyone's got a gun. Mm. I would never, ever, ever do that shit. Or even like knives are legal to carry there in a lot of places. Like even where you can't have a gun, you can have a knife. Where like uh, in, in Australia, you can't do that. Mm. Um, we love America. America's very funny. You guys are killing it yeah, and each other. You been um, watching anything on Binge recently? Uh, yeah, I've been watching a bit of a uh, of bit of F Boy Island. Oh. Yeah, my favorite TV show. You know, I I have I literally have not watched a single episode of the show that I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching the clips. Looks pretty good. Yeah, good on him. Good on F Boy Island. Um, definitely go watch it. Watch it, guys. Um, <laughs> dude. Speaking of predators, Doctor Disrespect has announced his return, brother. I don't think so. The dude that got caught trying to hook up with a minor is like, I'm coming back. Streaming looks boring. Yeah, man, a lot less boring than it was when the entire internet was blowing up because you were trying to fuck a child. <laughs> I would say that it's the, like, like if that's your definition of exciting, I would say that it's fucking great that it's calmed down a little bit from there. <laughs> this dude's actually going to attempt to do it. Like, he's actually walking back into the house like, hey, who missed me? No one! <laughs> Dude, if he successfully mounts a comeback, there is, like, not a single person ever can say that cancel culture is real. Not one person, ever. <laughs> There's. Could you imagine being a Tier 3 sub of post trying to fuck a child dr disrespect <laughs> what platform is he going to stream on twitch won't have him kick didn't he get banned from youtube probably He'll kick's going to have him you reckon is that the i mean that that would be his only option wouldn't it maybe he'll stream on twitter can you <laughs> can you stream on twitter you probably can dude if he comes back on kick dude i would love to see him do the predator catching thing. That's the that's the only path forward for Doctor Disrespect, is to come back as a predator hunter. I would watch that. You know, he would show up and he'd be like, "Are you here to meet a thirteen year old girl?" And then the guy would be like, "Hey, we know each other. I haven't seen you for ages. How have you been?" <laughs> he'd be like, I, "I don't know this man. Yeah, dude, we used to hang out in group chats all the time, brother." I still have I still have those zip files you sent me. <laughs> oh, Doctor Disrespect and Chris Tyson, Ava Tyson. Yeah. No, Chris with a K is fine. You can stay. You can still say Chris. Oh, I can. I cool. think Chris yeah. Tyson, Doctor Disrespect, team up. Don't you dare misgender misgender that predator. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, I if Doctor Disrespect manages to pull off a comeback. I will be, I will have to be impressed. <laughs> like yeah. there's no, there's no other option than, than other to be like, well, fuck, he's good at what he does. And it, if like, that's the most entertaining, like the only people who've managed to do that is like Michael Jackson. You know, that's how good Michael Jackson was at singing and dancing <laughs> is there's, there's interviews of, of a journalist being like, you know, it's weird as fuck to have multiple children sleeping in your bed and Michael Jackson being, like, no, it's not. It's beautiful. It's natural. It's lovely. And then the world were like, was, was like, yeah, he, he can sing. He didn't do it. I would prefer to live in a world where I, he didn't do it because Thriller slaps. So he was found, found not guilty. I don't, I don't, I'm not an MJ. I'm not an MJ. I don't denier. care if Supporter. if you, if there's there's an interview of him arguing with an interviewer about <laughs> whether or not you can have children who aren't yours in your bed. Weird. See ya. <laughs> I can't play the guy that has that loves a sleepover. Um. All right. So my flight on the way back. Okay. I've just, I've just, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not, 
I'm not flying economy. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Well, I'll fly economy. I have to. But I'm not flying the fucking cheapest version. Yes. I'm doing, I'm, we're doing mid flights. I'm too tall to be hunched over in a fucking Jetstar cabin anymore. I'm not doing it. Maybe if we could sell three. I flew business shirts. once on someone else's dime. I've seen the light. Someone else used their points to put me on a business flight. I'm not doing it anymore. My flight to London got cancelled, okay? I was very upset at the time. But then they put me with Qatar Airlines on the fucking exit row because I am a legend and I said, if you're going to cancel my flight for 12 hours, I want to be on a business class flight knowing that they wouldn't because that would be, what, a fucking $10,000 ticket? Business from Melbourne to London would actually be like, be at least five grand. Probably more like, oh, on no. Qatar, I'd be like 10. Yeah. It'd yeah. be 10. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I'm like, I want a business class. I knew I wasn't going to get it, but I was very upset. I want a business class flight. This is unacceptable. 12 hour delay. Don't you know who I am? I wasn't doing that, but I was going, look, I, I think a business, you know. So then they gave me exit row and dude, I flew all the way to London exit row stretched out like this on fucking Qatar Airlines. I can't do it. And then on the way back, right, I got some crazy deal somehow. Wasn't even that much more expensive. I think it was because I procrastinated. I booked it the day before I left, which is so dumb. Yeah. Like I like I should have I should have been bankrupted by it, but somehow I got this crazy deal, three flights, super cheap, Emirates, two flights. And the second flight, I had the whole row to myself. The whole row for seven hours. There was no one on my plane. That's awesome. And then the business, the ticket for Jetstar, it said Jetstar. I was like, oh, fuck. But it said business. I was like, oh, my God. Ooh. Business Jetstar. What's that going to be like? Virgin economy? They don't spit on you? Anyway, turns out. <laughs> seemed to be some kind of error. It wasn't business, right? So it was economy jet stuff for nine hours. So that sucked. Bruh. Sitting next to me were two, because we're flying from Bangkok to Melbourne, which is nine hours. And I was in the fucking, the, oh. the middle one, but I was on an aisle. The middle, the middle row of seats, but on the aisle. So at least I was on the aisle. Guy puts his seat back straight into my fucking knees. The whole flight, I was... Every time I moved, he would go. He would experience some turbulence. Mm -hmm. He looked back at me like I was an asshole. And I just said, I'm so sorry, man. Like, I don't, I don't, like, as soon as he saw the sign, like, he, he looked back at me like he was going to go, stop fucking kicking my chair. And then he saw that my head and shoulders were above the backrest to the point where I couldn't put my head back. Mm. And he was just like, oh, and he moved his seat forward a little bit. And I thought, what a kind man. Sitting next to me, two Thai girls, women, right? Adult women, but they're fucking tiny. They must have flown to Bangkok or, or, or Japan or something to see a K-pop band because both of them, for the full nine hours, the whole flight, right? This is my third flight, so I'm coming in and out of consciousness. They were fucking locked in the full flight. They had their iPhone and they each had an iPad and they were going through what looked like hours of footage of these K-pop idols scrubbing through it frame by frame for nine hours. And every single time they landed on a frame that looked even slightly homoerotic between two of the members of the K, they would screenshot it and then they would show each other. And I, I don't speak their language, but I know they were fantasizing about them fucking... <sighs> And I wonder why no one's doing that at my show. No one <laughs> is pulling out cameras and filming my show and then taking screenshots whenever I look slightly gay. What type of fucking shit fan base do I have? Step your game up, all right? If you're not spending nine hours on a flight with your friend comparing screenshots... Of me performing, going, oh, he looks like he's about to kiss someone in the front row. You're not a real fan. <laughs> I've had a bunch of people bring glow sticks on this tour. Oh, a bunch awesome. of people. That was great. <laughs> 
Really, really funny stuff. Lots of people, as I said, if you come to a show alone, you've got to wear glow sticks and that's how you're going to identify each other and make friends. And that happened. You know what was really good? At, I can't remember what show it was, but there were three people sitting in the front row and they all had glow sticks. I'm like, oh, you guys all brought glow sticks? And they went, no, we all came individually wearing glow sticks and then identified each other. Now we're friends. So cool. That's so cool. One guy brought glow sticks for the entire audience at one of the shows. So I walk out and everyone has glow sticks. I'm like, fuck, these are my most hardcore fans. And everyone's like, no, no, this guy brought a whole bag. <laughs> Very funny. But not good enough if you're not watching back the photos that you took for hours going, what do you, looks like this gay in this one. <laughs> then you're not a fan. No, please don't film me. All right. I, that, don't do that. That would suck. Um, but anyway, uh, on this fly after they'd been editing for hours and it was like, it, I think we got on the plane at like midnight, right? So and it's nine hours. So about, about 5am they, they the girls finally start drifting off and it's a jet star one. So it's super fucking cramped and they're Thai girls. So they're really small, but even they're fucking cramped. And so I'm trying my best not to kick the guy in front of me and not elbow the girl next to me. Cause I don't fit in my seat. Anyway, she starts doing these ones. <laughs> where, where she starts like fucking nodding off and she's trying to stay awake so that she can keep editing the K-pop idol stuff, but she keeps coming in and out of consciousness. And then eventually she just falls asleep, right? And then about 20 minutes after she falls asleep, I fall asleep and then I wake up like an hour after that and she's like fully in my seat, like on my chest, <laughs> her head and completely unconscious, and then I was just like, oh, bless her. And I just I just let her, let her sleep because she was all tuckered out from, from manipulating content to make her idols look queer. And then she woke up and she was so fucking embarrassed after like two hours. She woke up, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I went, it's all right. It's fine. <laughs> you know, I'm fucking, I'm so wide. My shoulders are so broad. I'm kind of in her seat anyway. I'm like, it's all right. Um, oh my God. How long have we been going here? An hour. Okay. Probably wrap. All right. I'm going to wrap it because I've got, I have tw like 20 minutes on the first flight home that I took. All right. Oh, also last episode, a lot of people were complaining uh, about me not doing a two hour episode on Warhammer World. So I have decided to spare you from doing that, but I will, I have decided I will be doing a full episode on Patreon dedicated to my incredible trip to Warhammer World and it will go for as long as it goes. All right. I'm, I've, I've set aside a day. I'm going to sit down and I'm just going to do that. You know, okay. You know, what's for a teaser of how, how much I loved it. Have a look at this Keelan. Let me, okay. So here's, so here's my photo library from when I'm in like, England, right? Mm. Now, obviously, when you're traveling, you take a lot of photos here. Yeah? Okay, so here's a few photos that I took. But here's where's uh, where's Warhammer World? Okay, so all right, so there's a few photos of me traveling to like a place I've never been to before and going to some of the most beautiful locations you've ever seen in your life. This is Warhammer World. Oh my god! The amount of oh my <laughs> god! Photo. Yeah, I took I took. Hundreds of photos. That's that's good. Yeah, I'm happy for you. Yeah, it was the it was the greatest. Anyway, we're gonna do it on Patreon, okay? Well, no, 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 you are gonna do it on Patreon. Yeah, Keelan is not gonna be there for that, and and you're welcome, mate. You you can put it on uh, three times speed, and let's do it if you want, and then it'll only take four hours. <laughs> um, all right, so that's gonna be on Patreon uh, in the next couple of days, but uh, we're gonna continue on Patreon right now with uh, an episode that that most people would rather listen to. Um, thanks for listening. Loosespears.com uh, for the for the merch. It's available till September 30 and we're not doing a restock. That's it. So if you don't pre-order it, you're going to miss out. We've got a shirt. We've got a pin. We've got a shirt and pin bundle. Best merch we've ever, ever made. The only merch we've ever made for Spearhead Sundays to celebrate 350 episodes without missing a single episode since 2016. Do the math. Every single Sunday since then, there's been an episode. That's 350 Sundays, all right? Thank you for listening. Uh, we're going to continue on Patreon. I uh, hope you have a shit one. Bye. <laughs>